And so I mentioned also the uh, one of the other core integrations with OBI 11G, SBase, and the EPM suite is with the OBI 11G Action Framework. And I, I mentioned that the OBI EE um, Action Framework is is very widespread, uh, meaning that it encompasses a lot of different portions of, of integration, um, anywhere from web services to um, J2E to Java calls, um, uh, SOA, um, all, all these different facets of um, what data integration is becoming. And um, one of those items just happens to be uh, the ability to leverage um, EPM as basically a, a target. And um, what I mean by that is that with setting up action framework, we can actually point to our financial reporting server and within an OBI 11G report, we can actually create an action framework um, link, if you will, that upon any particular type of uh, perhaps an exception in an OBI 11G report or something we want to bring visibility to, we want to create some actionable intelligence, we could actually set up a link that the user would click and then they'd have the ability to actually navigate to a particular um, HFR, financial reporting report, et cetera, and bring up more detail on that particular topic. And so the action framework, when you're setting these up, um, they're, you're able to, act, to create actions within presentation services. So end users, or, or rather, uh, BI authors, the individuals within your organization who actually create reports, um, they'll be, be able to, to take a report requirement that you might set forth or someone might set forth in your organization and, um, and build out the actions for, for that particular report. And again, um, you know, a couple things to think about are just integration with, with other applications and processes that might be out there. Um, this is something that could uh, interact with Hyperion planning directly. It could interact with EBS. Let's say we've got um, a, a customer who's um, 90 days late paying their invoice. You know, we, we could put a, a stop delivery on order you know, right through Action Framework by, by prompting the end user with, with that functionality. And of course, we can make S-based calls, like I mentioned um, before, um, running a calc on a cube, et cetera. So here's a real quick uh, visual for how we would do this. Uh, while we're creating our OBI 11G report, we would uh, use the new action link, and, and this is just kind of getting to the, to the end of actually setting this up. We'd see an option for navigate to EPM content. Okay. We would give the link um, a name. The action would be navigate to EPM content, from which point we'd be able to select a specific, um, let's say, an HFR report. And then once the report renders, and an end user is actually viewing that report, once they click on um, a, a link or a specific cell that has that link in it, um, they're prompted with several options. And in this example, we're seeing that we've got the user, um, we've given the user the ability to navigate to recent news, maybe that's company news, um, email, to send out an email, um, to launch you know, um, HFM, um, to log onto a competitor history site, to view a report, Etc. And so what this what this um, allows your OBI 11G reports and dashboards to become are actionable. You're now providing end users with actionable intelligence. Intelligence. We we see this particular analysis. We see this variance. We we see something that draws our attention into it. Um, we click on the link and it sends us somewhere where we can do something about it. Uh, here's another example. Uh, embedding um, application links or, or actions within a, a dashboard or, or report. So with what we're looking at here, uh, we're basically saying, you know, in this particular uh, financial report that, that we're, we're providing to our end users, um, they need access to go ahead and be able to jump into planning or, or strategic finance from within this report. And we're providing that ability to those users, again, allowing that one-stop functionality with OBIs at that portal. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier on, 
um, a, a few technical tidbits that uh, I want to throw out to um, to the audience today. And a, a lot of these are, are really straightforward. I didn't want to dive too deeply into each one of these items. Um, again, um, there's so much to cover with this integration. I want to keep it at a level where everyone attending today will get something out of it. We're going to answer some questions um, towards, the, towards the end of the webinar. So definitely, if you're submitting your questions right now, we're going to start um, uh, taking some of those and, and um, answering some questions as well. Um, so just getting a little, little technical um, out of the functional bit a little and um, started looking at server compatibility, um, metadata import for HFM, um, S-based outline cleanliness, best practices. Um, we always get the question when we're talking about S-based integration um, with OBI 11G. If I bring in my S-based model and then I make a change to my, my source S-based cube or database, uh, how does that affect the model in OBIEE, what happens? And in 10G, we had some issues there where we pretty much had to um, to reimport everything and, and pretty much wipe our work and, and start it over, um, which was in solution, in solution a lot of times. But um, in 11G, they've, they've done some refinement there, and it's looking better. Uh, S-based drill through um, generated SQL um, with the new drill through functionality. Um, how does that SQL look on the back end? What's actually getting passed um, back to our, our source? And then, of course, um, just looking at some other multidimensional engines, um, you know, what are, what are some other possibilities with OBI? So we get the question quite a bit, um, especially now since Oracle uh, OBI 11G has moved to uh, Fusion middleware, um, as has Oracle S-Base with the latest release, 11.1.2. Um, um, and sorry, that's a typo right there. I should say 11.1.2, not 11.1.1.2. Uh, so right now, the latest release of S-Base is 11.1.2. It's a Fusion Edition release. Uh, that integrates tightly with OBI 11G. Um, it's the way Oracle's kind of setting, setting four things in motion um, and, and setting up the roadmap. So everything with the Fusion middleware stack. If uh, your organization hasn't um, begun working with um, Oracle S-Base, um, the latest release, uh, we highly recommend it simply because the integration is tight. Uh, the latest release of S-Base has some excellent functionality, uh, especially for Hyperion planning users. Um, you know, we, we do a lot of demos for customers over here. Um, if you'd like a demo of uh, the new release of, of planning, uh, just let us know. We'd be happy to do that for your organization. Uh, definitely recommend it. Uh, 11.1.1.3 and 9.3.3 um, are integratable with OBI 11G with the patch. Now, speaking with some folks at Oracle, 11.1.1.3 um, uh, patch is being given out, um, I won't say reluctantly, but not being given out as much as 9.3.3 patch. Um, again, they're looking at the roadmap of um, eventually getting everybody on the Fusion middleware stack. And for HFM, for the latest release, um, that integrates well with OBI 11G as well. And that's the preferred method and um, the recommended uh, version. Um, we often get asked a question, when we import the HFM metadata into our RPD, what's really happening? What are we gaining? What are we losing? Well, when you import um, HFM data, metadata, uh, you really have to look at the difference between measures and dimensions. So your measures are going to be modeled as a logical fact table, um, pretty much just with the single, single value. Okay? And, um, Data cell properties, you know, cell status, count status, et cetera, um, they're exposed as, as additional logical fact columns. So that's kind of how things are coming out on the measure side of thing, measure side of things. Now the dimensions are being brought across, and they're they're getting modeled out pretty cleanly. Parent child hierarchy, um, properties are coming over, you know, short name, generation, level, um, uh, member properties other than name and description model using lookup tables in the business model, um, which is a, definitely a lot more deeper dive than we're getting in today. And then, of course, um, shared members, alternate hierarchies, and um, other hierarchies are supported. And, and again, that's just coming with 11G, being able to support those different type of hierarchies. 